Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a very strange card called Gedak Teague, and right now he is $40 on TCG Maids, which is the Friday before the video is going to be posted, probably on Thursday. So Gedak Teague is a card, I'm going to pull him up, actually I know less about this card than I do about Eye of Ugin, Eye of Ugin being the other one that you guys wanted me to talk about a little bit, and always use the comment section to talk to each other. So Gidok Teague, Legendary Creature, Kifkin Advisor. It is a 2-2. Non-creature spells with converted mana cost 4 greater can't be played. Non-creature spells with X in their mana cannot be played. So it's a 2-2 Legendary Creature, a green and a white. I don't know what deck is playing him. He's always seemed like a sideboard card to me. Uh, maybe, I know what decks he would be good against. Tron would be one of them. Uh, Tron actually would be a very good deck. He would be... Uh, 4 greater, so non-creature spells with converted mana cost 4 greater. Yeah, Tron plays uh, that board wipe, all is dust, or I guess it used to. I don't know if that's going to play in more, but non-creature would also be Khan or Ugin itself. Um, as well as, you know, this probably knocks out Splinter Twin too. Yeah, non-creature spells converted mana cost 4 or greater, so Twin. Uh, if you play this, then Twin has to kill it, but I feel like Twin can kill it pretty easily because Lightning Bolt and essentially Twin being in red makes it have a ton of options to kill it. I think the other one, the deal four to a white or a... The two, two enemy colors, white or blue creature, you could obviously play that instant speed. Uh, volley, rendering Volley, you could play that against Gadok Teague. Uh, so Gedak Teague, a very interesting card. I don't know why he's at $40. Uh, maybe you guys can explain to me in the comments below, sections below. I do know he was not reprinted in any of the Modern Masters. But I don't know what type of decks would uh, want to play with him. I mean, the fact that he's $40 TCG mids. Uh, let's see what he's on Star City Games. Uh, it's very... It just shows me that people will buy like any card and it will spike any card just for the hell of it. Um, it's not like he's in a, you know, he's in a very strong deck right now, is he? Uh, modern season is, has not happened yet, so we're going into modern season soon, but it will be standard season at least until February, uh, where GP Houston is standard. That's how I know that date. Uh, and so Gedok Teague, a very interesting card, a very sideboard-esque card, if you will. Will he see... Will he go above $40? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, it really depends on, you know, whenever you have a buyout happening, this is another example where I'm pretty sure that it's a s similar group of people and they're buying it out. They have an email listserv where they send an email to everybody and they tell everyone, hey, let's buy this card out. And that's what happens. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous in my opinion um, that it happens that often. Um, where they look at a card, they feel, or they, worst case scenario is they create a new format called Tiny Leaders or 1993-94 where it's like old school magic. I think that's what the format's called. And they have to use cards that were printed 1993 or later, or earlier, 1994 or earlier, and they call it old school magic. And then suddenly all these random cards go up in price. I don't know. It's at this point, it's just kind of humorous to me that people would actually uh, look at you know I Ugin. I Ugin, good card, good card, but it was reprint. So I just checked up on this again uh, in my previous video. It was a mythic, and then it became a rare in Modern Masters 2015. So yeah, why is I Ugin thirty dollars again? I don't know. How does a four dollar card one day become thirty dollars the next day? Did demand really <laughs> increase that all that much on it? <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense, right? Unless you have a bunch of people on an email list serve and they are buying these cards because they're being told to buy the cards and then they can sell it to other people who don't are not on this email list and they you know, can make money from that way. The only way you make money from a Gedok Teague at this point or a um, Ive Ugin is if you purchase early and you dump them on someone who's trying to look to make even more money. 
Again, a uh, very humorous situation. Uh, just never get involved when a card goes up that quickly. Don't get involved in the card. Don't go in on the card. I think it's just a very it, red flags fly. Every, like red flags come up all the time on these type of cards that spike hard, uh, because you know if there's no demand for it, it will go down in price again. Uh, just like every single card in Magic, if uh, QR or Omnicless is not seeing any play, Omnicless I think is six dollars right now, six dollars and like eighty two cents. I should probably make a video about him because his you know curve is very interesting. But yeah, I mean, it's clearly some a doing of a group of individuals who I'm not going to name because they hate my videos very much. And they want to buy out Gaddock Tea and they want to buy out Ivorian. Good on them. Oh, good for them. Make, make magic cards more expensive because that's obviously what you're doing. Anyway, bye guys.